Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening once again from uh, uh, wherever you are watching me from any part of the world. I want to welcome you once again, this time to model two of the course fundamentals of natural resource governance. We'll be continuing from where we left off under uh, model one, which took participants through the mind life cycle. So having talked about what the mind life cycle entails and some of the socioeconomic contributions that possibly can be harnessed from the extractive resources. Another area we need to look at are the adverse impact of extractive activities, despite the impressive contribution they may have on our economies. So this model will limit uh, the discussion to the environmental and social impacts of extractive activities. The aim is to expose participants to a general understanding of the impacts of extractive activities and the various interactions between extractive activities and the socioeconomic life of the communities within which extractive activities go on. So as I mentioned, the various impacts and also the mitigation measures that can be adopted to manage or alleviate the severity of these impacts on both the environment and the community. As we already mentioned, there are a lot of mining activities going on around in Africa, particularly in West Africa. Several countries are resource endowed and almost every West African country engages in one form of mining or the other. However, whether being a large scale mining or artisanal small scale mining, there are some level of risk exposure to both the environment and the human population. For the purpose of this discussion, we will reduce the impact of extractive activities to three main impacts. One, the environmental impact, two, the social impact, and three, the economic impact. So now let's look at the environmental impact, how extractive activities impact our environment. One main medium that extractive activities exposes us is through our rich water resources. Usually, the quality of water is compromised during extractive operations. This is due to leaching of chemicals and other contaminants into both underground water and surface water. So usually when you visit a typical community where mining activities are going on, the issue of water is one of scarcity. I mean, quality water, which is uh, safe for drinking and sometimes even safe for bathing and doing other household activities are scarce due to extractive activities, especially in areas where there is so much illegal mining activities. And in some cases, some ASM activities also cause um, significant pollution of water resources due to the difficulty that generally countries have in formalizing the ASM sector into the main economy. So the enforcement of compliance to environmental standards, especially among ASM, um, those who deal in ASM is limited because of the informal nature. The proliferation of illegal mining activities has also become a menace in most West African countries where we have mining 
not just be going on near water bodies, but in worst cases, on the water body itself. When you come to Ghana, the government is currently battling the issue of illegal mining, particularly because of the impact on our water bodies. The state agency in charge of water has been complaining that in not so far the near uh, the future, we may be forced to import water because the level of pollution has made it either too costly or nearly impossible to treat some of the water for pipe bone drinking. Unfortunately, when you go to these places, so access to water for consumption becomes difficult. And when individuals resort to well water, especially large scale mining, with the uh, heaping of um, um, the materials which contains um, hazardous chemicals, heaping at one place, um, after some time seeping into underground water, gradually affects underground water such that when you even dig up a well, the water that you get becomes unsafe for drinking. So there's general scarcity of quality water for both humans and livestock. One area again, where extractive activities exposes us to environmental risk is the quality of air through various emission forms. Um, during the various stages of the mine life cycle, the air quality is compromised. And this can happen through um, road usages. You know, mines um, due to their heavy equipment and the transportation of the mineral ore or the waste rock extracted. We have to ply through the communities to transport their equipment and the minerals. By doing so, there are a lot of um, dust in the air because of the heavy trucks or heavy vehicles that they use. And also the burning of fumes, which contains um, carbon monoxide. So all these pollute the air during blasting of rocks and crashing and also during smelting, all these emit, emit fumes into the air, which pollutes the atmosphere. This poses um, significant risk to individuals who live in the area, especially when the community, the human population live not too far from the mine site. There are also impacts on the fauna, thus the vegetation is not spared because while all these depend on the water for survival, so the contamination of the water bodies affects aquatic life, it affects plants, it affects livestock, it affects the entire biodiversity, if not properly managed. Another impact is on the soil quality with various forms of seepages of um, dangerous chemicals and contaminants into the soil. The soil becomes um, useless for any use, not even for plant life. We've always learned about the environmental impact of mining activities. However, this area of impact are less talked, uh, talked about. That's the social impact. In addition to the environmental impact, mining activities have the impact on the population within which the mine site is located. That's the host mining community. And there are several ways that um, mining activities or extractive activities impact the social life of the community. Many times emphasis, as I mentioned, is on the environment. So before one can even attain a mining license, you are required to perform environmental impact assessment with little emphasis on the social impact. However, in recent times, 
um, most jurisdiction include um, require environmental and social impact assessment to include the social economic impact of the mining operation or the supposed mining operation on the community within which the extractive activity is supposed to take place. Although this is done, sometimes the power differences because the communities are usually vulnerable. Is the extractive company that is bringing in the investment. Government also needs the minerals to be extracted so that it can get its revenue. Because of that, although a social impact assessment could be conducted, not much emphasis goes on to bring out some mitigation measures to ensure that the lives of the people or the rural population is enhanced. Many times, in spite of social impact assessment, villages or mining communities are left impoverished, even prior to the advent of mining operations. So then, how then does mining activity impact the social lives of the community within which the mine is located. One is human displacement and resettlement. As we mentioned in model one, under the exploratory uh, stage, some seismic data and geological um, survey is conducted in order to ascertain the exact mine location within the mine area. So should the mine location be found in the area where there is human settlement? The bad news is that there's supposed to be relocation of all those who are settled in that area and resettled at an agreed um, location. So that is the first impact, because sometimes communities do not get the opportunity to even decide where they want to go. Usually, like I mentioned, they are the vulnerable side. So government wants its revenue, the company wants its revenue, and the community, whether you like it or not, will have to be relocated. This, however, causes a lot of um, social disruptions because uh, people have been look, uh, living in that location for a very long time. They may have created some social ties with neighbors and even some social uh, some some ties with the ecosystem, but they will still have to be located. Um, cultural ties are removed because sometimes they may have some um, um, cultural ties, such as they may be some cultural sites, sorry. They may be a shrine for the traditional believers, or there may be some historical site within the community, or there can also be a cemetery where uh, people have their ties because their uh, fathers and forefathers, their ancestors, are there and by living close to such an area, they feel the closeness to their past relatives. Unfortunately, even though they may have new homes to be resettled, places like historical sites, places like shrines, museums, places like cemeteries can never be recovered, no matter how much um, mitigation measure is adopted. Another form that uh, the social lives of communities are impacted is through migration. With the advent of mining activity, from urban dwellers and even um, other people from nearby communities into the host mining community due to the proliferation of economic activities uh, preempted by the mining operation. This exerts a lot of pressure or excessive pressure on the limited 
social infrastructure that the community has. Again, it also exposes the community members to a lot of social vices, such as um, sexual abuse and other forms of crimes. Studies have shown that there's high incidence of gender-based violence in mining communities. This is because usually women lose their farmlands, which is the source of their livelihoods, and they become, they become overly dependent on men, who usually are the beneficiaries from mining activities. With their economic power stripped of them and becoming heavily dependent on men, they are subjected to all forms of abuse. Studies have also shown that sometimes the men with now having an economic power can resort to multiple partners, which exposes them to all forms of sexually transmitted diseases. So according to existing studies, evidence abound of the incidence of sexual abuse, high records of sexually transmitted diseases in mining communities. Also is the impact on their health. As I mentioned earlier, during my discussion on the environmental impact. With water pollution and air pollution, we have high incidence of respiratory diseases because most often the air is contaminated. When you visit a typical mining community, it is usually dusty. When you visit a typical mining community, the incidence of skin rashes, especially among young children, is very high. This is due to the pollution of water bodies. Animals are not left out because in a typical remote community, the river or the stream is not only a source of drinking water to human beings, but also to livestock. With the pollution of the river bodies, livestock access to water is impeded. Also, um, communities, cost of living in communities becomes very high because now they have to resort to uh, purified drinking water. For those who do not have the means to access purified drinking water, resign their faith to depend on the polluted water, which results in skin diseases and other forms of illness. And with increase in public health incidences, it means that the rate of um, care work also go up, which affects the lives of women in the community. Because women will now have to take care of sick children. They will have to leave their jobs or their work to take care of sick elderly, um, elderly relatives. The impact on cultural patrimony, I've already discussed that, that's through relocation and resettlement. Um, cultural ties are cut, like historical sites, places of worship, cemeteries, etc., which can never be recovered. Again, there is restriction of civic space. With the advent of mining operations in the community, Usually when, where there is um, inadequate compensation and where there is um, um, unfair treatment of, of the community members, uh, there are a lot of agitations, especially among the youth, where livelihoods have been lost due to loss of farmlands and there is inadequate compensation to ensure that the livelihoods of participant or the livelihoods of inhabitants of communities are sustained. In order to secure their properties, there is influx of security agencies 
within the mining communities. And this restricts the movement of community members and in extreme case are subjected to um, unfair treatment from private law agencies hired by the companies to secure their physical properties. Again, like I mentioned, there are conflicts, several agitations between the youth and the mining company because of loss of livelihoods and also the will to have a share, a direct share from the mining operations. This is what leads to the proliferation of illegal mining in most West African countries. Another impact that is less talked about is economic impact. Although mining or extractive resource is a catalyst for economic growth and development, it can also be a conduit for the downturn of an economy through what is termed the resource case or the Dutch disease. This is where countries become overly dependent on the resources to the detriment of other economic sectors, which prior to supported the growth of the economy with such focus on the resources. Influx of skilled workers or skilled labor from other economic sectors to this new discovered um, uh, resource sector. This leave other economic sectors starved of skilled resources and gradually productivity and its relevance to the economy begin to wane down. Again, usually resource sector pay very well. Therefore, you have the labor force in the resource sector 